Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Let's do a video updating you guys, filling you in on this major, important, significant industry change. How are album sales counted in regards to merchandise and album bundles? Some of you may be thinking, what relevancy does this have to anything? Well, this has actually been a point of controversy, high profile controversy, a few times now in recent years. One major example was Nicki Minaj blowing up at Travis Scott over her new record, not overtaking Astroworld on the charts and getting up to number one as she claimed because Travis was just raking in more album sales by bundling sales of his album along with sales of his tickets on the Astroworld tour. Earlier this year, album bundles and merchandise bundles were a point of controversy when Tyler, the creator's Igor, uh, passed out the new DJ Khaled record who was also bundling energy drinks with his album as well. It's just that uh, I guess the bundle sales for his latest very trash record uh, were not accepted, while Tyler's merchandise album bundles were, for whatever reason they were. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of that. What's important is that there are clear and defined rules now when it comes to merchandise and album bundles, so there should be no confusion about this sort of thing into the future. Now, keep in mind, these rules are set to go into motion uh, on January 3rd, 2020. So I guess current rules still apply, though there's not a whole lot of time for somebody to make it to number one with a giant record and a bunch of <laughs> album merchandise bundles at this point. Anyway, uh, let's scroll down and check out the new rules, the new regulations. They're pretty simple, straightforward, cut and dry, and I would actually say smart. I would say this is a pretty effective solution to the problem. It says here, according to Billboard, in regards to counting these album sales moving forward, in order for an album sale to be counted as a part of a merchandise slash album bundle, all the items in the bundle must also be available for purchase concurrently and individually on the same website. So you have to have the option to buy a shirt or buy a shirt and an album. It can't just be, hey, you buy the shirt and you automatically get the album. Furthermore, the item must also be sold separately. Obviously, it has to be sold on its own. And the price of the bundle has to be higher than the price of the non-bundle. Okay, so if you're going to get the shirt, as opposed to the shirt with the album, the shirt has to be cheaper in comparison. You can't just be getting the same thing and the album is essentially free, you know, and, and that's the thing. Uh, the problem with these album bundles up until this point is that completing or getting the bundle or marking the album sale wasn't adding any extra price to the listener. And what it says here is that the bundle with the album must be priced at $3.49 more than the merchandise item alone, which I, I think, uh, <laughs> not to veer off into another topic, but, um, I think that says a lot about the current <laughs> value of music, uh, considering that back, I mean, when I was a kid, or back in the old days, okay, boomer, um, <laughs> you know, I'd have to pay $20, $25 for a, a frickin' CD. I mean, there, there was like a, a lawsuit over the uh, overpricing of CDs also when I was a lot younger. I, I actually got like a, a check in the mail when I was a kid over that, and it was like for a few cents or whatever. But still, uh, there was a, a class action lawsuit about uh, the overpricing of music uh, back in, in my younger years, uh, which just goes to show you how much uh, listeners and consumers were getting price gouged on new music in every fucking direction by the major labels. Uh, nowadays, if you want to sell your shit in a bundle, which is really the only way some people can sell their shit, uh, it's got to be $3 and 49 cents more. So again, uh, I think this is a pretty cut and dry solution to the problem. Uh, while I don't think this is going to slow down these types of bundles or anything at the end of the day, because if you're buying a 30, 40, $50 Tyler or Travis shirt, what does it matter if they're adding $3.50 more to the price? You know what I mean? Uh, but at least 
Uh, these rules are a bit more sensible. It makes the whole thing feel a lot less cheap. There's another stipulation here that should um, clean and clear things up a little bit in regards to this process. It says merchandise bundles can only be sold in an artist's official direct-to-consumer web store and not via third-party sites. So this is also going to curb um, the stupid energy drink uh, type situations where, uh, or even something like, for example, uh, let's say that if you buy a Little Caesars pizza, you automatically get a copy of the new Ed Sheeran album with it. So every time you buy a fucking pizza, it's a sale for Ed Sheeran. No, thank you. So once more, I don't think these rules are going to do anything to change or curb bundling, which in the grander scheme of things, I don't think is the worst thing in the world anyway. It only feels cheap and like cheating when bundles are coming along with, I don't know, the sale of something a consumer would have purchased anyway, even without the availability of that album bundled with it to begin with. Or if a consumer is purchasing something without really knowing or understanding that there's some kind of album sale transaction taking place too. There could feasibly be a scenario as well where somebody selling, let's say again, an energy drink with their album bundled with it, is buying up hundreds or thousands of the energy drink just to get that counting as a sale for uh, the album too. That's kind of skeevy. In my opinion, these new rules are going to make the whole album bundling and sale process uh, a lot fairer and a lot more sensible. It can't be pushed onto the consumer by the bundle only being available one way. That transaction has to happen from a certain person and in a certain space, and it has to be priced a certain way as well. I think these are common sense rules, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Uh, let me know if you think there's going to be more drama coming as a result of album bundles, or if there's some kind of loophole or gray area that hasn't been covered uh, by the rules and regulations that Billboard is setting out so far. We will link you to this article down below so you can check it out for yourself. Over here next to my head is a video you can check out, the Tyler Khaled video I talked about earlier. Also a link to subscribe to the channel as well. And I will see you in the next one, the next video. Anthony Fantano, Billboard Bundles, forever.